like a neglected weed, ignorant of liberty, having no experience of it. I was not happy or contented. Every time I seen a white man, I was afraid of being carried away. I think slavery is the next thing to hell. If a person would send another into bondage, he would, it appears to me, be bad enough to send him to hell if he could. I had reasoned this out in my mind. There was one of two things I had a right to, liberty or death. If I could not have one, I would have the other, for no man should take me alive. I would fight for my liberty as long as my strength lasted. And when the time came for me to go, the Lord would let them take me. In the colony's highest court, it was said that Hugh Gwynne's servants caused him considerable loss and prejudice. I want you to punish them, my lord. You will serve three more years. The two white men are sentenced to simply a number of years added to their indentures. For John Punch, the one black among these three men, his fate is infinitely worse, it's servitude for life. For the rest of your life. Oh, now, there's no law that says that John Punch had to have been enslaved for life, but uh, it was clear that 1640 is sort of the turning point, the beginning of the point where Africans are going to be treated differently as opposed to whites who are indentured servants. Rather than distinguishing people because they are unfree, people are being distinguished now because they're black or white. And that whiteness is privileging in ever increasing and beneficial ways. Emmanuel Driguez first appears in the records of the Eastern Shore of Virginia in about 1645 as the slave of uh, Captain Francis Pott. Emmanuel Driguez fits nicely into the category of people that we are coming to call Atlantic Creoles. He had this European name, Portuguese really. Driguez is just an anglicization or a shortened form of Rodriguez. As part of Emmanuel's servitude, Captain Pott provided him with a cow and a calf. When Emmanuel began his service, his wife Frances and daughters, ages eight and one, were bound to Captain Pott as well. Captain Pott informed the court, I have taken to service two daughters of my Negro, Emmanuel Driggers, to serve and be with me. The terms of Emmanuel's enslavement guaranteed that these children would attain their freedom after a specified number of years. However, no such provision was made for their brothers and sisters. Captain Pot ran into some financial difficulties. He instructed his nephew to try to arrange things to get him out of debt and told him particularly that he would rather part with anything other than his Negroes. Yet in 1657, after 12 years of service, Emmanuel's family became Captain Pot's way to arrange things. Their family is completely disrupted, um, in fact destroyed, by Potts's economic um, insecurities so that when Potts accrues debt, their younger child is sold. 
And later their oldest daughter, Anne, is sold for about 5,000 pounds of tobacco. When Captain Pot died, his widow inherited a farm, farm animals, and Emmanuel. However, by 1661, court records show that Emmanuel had attained his freedom, leased 145 acres, and expanded his livestock holdings. Even if you get your freedom, as a black person, your life is not going to be like that of a free white person. Emmanuel Drake is, gets his freedom. He leases land. He's got to pay many times what a white person would have paid to lease that land. He is not treated like your average free person. Race is really by now a factor and becoming a more and more significant factor. By 1665, Maryland and New York had legalized slavery. Three years earlier, Virginia lawmakers decreed, all children born in Virginia shall be held bond or free according to the condition of the mother. Even children of, say, a white master and a slave woman, it makes those children not free, it makes them slave. It makes them chattel, it makes them valuable. It makes the white father a slave owner of his own children. Black men and black women raised thousands of mulatto children as families. That love of children transcended the pain and the horror of how that child was created. Unlike some Europeans who created these children and saw their lives so meaningless and insignificant that they sold them no differently than any other slave. Emmanuel Driggis continued to see to the needs of his enslaved children. He transferred title to livestock to them uh, later on, hoping uh, against hope that the livestock might be a source uh, for some route to freedom for them. The court records of September 29, 1673 state, I, Emmanuel, grant unto my said two daughters, one bay mare. The same day, he granted another mare to his free children. Despite his efforts, Emmanuel could not free Thomas and Anne, the son and daughter sold by Captain Pott. However, because Thomas married a free black woman, his children were born free. <laughs> 